Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is the Produce Moms podcast. And oh, I just absolutely love this show. I say it week after week, week after week. But you know what? Each and every week we have another new incredible story that is helping to advance the industry in all sorts of ways and how we grow the best tasting fruits and vegetables for us all, how we treat the planet, treat the people, treat the community. And that all kind of comes together in today's episode. We are welcoming two members from the executive team at Westphalia Fruit, uh, Raina Nelson. She is the CEO of the United States and Jonathan Sutton. He is the group sustainability executive. Westphalia is a brand that grows. Well, I'm going to let these two tell you all about it, but, uh, truly a leading brand in avocados. And uh, gosh, I mean, what is there that we can't say about avocados? Everyone loves them. I mean, the consumer data tells us it's like absolutely um, a love child that we all share is avocados. So cheers to avocados and cheers to our two guests today. We are going to dive into uh, some pretty exciting things that Westphalia is doing as it relates to their brand growth, but most importantly, this incredible sustainability story and and, their, and how they're making the world a better place. So we'll start our introductions today. Raina, we'll start with you. Raina, my friend, we are so proud of you here at the Produce Moms, and we are so overjoyed to welcome you to our show. Thank you, Lori. It is so amazing to be here, and I am proud of you, too. The Produce oh, thanks. Moms has just been such a such a wonderful force that you've created. So very proud to be a part of the podcast today. Thank you. We're glad that you're here. And, and Jonathan, please say hello to everyone and tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Yeah. Hi, Lori. Lori, thanks very much for inviting me. Um, you'll gather by my accent that I'm not, not uh, from the US, so glad to be on this side of the pond and just sharing some thoughts with you today. Um, yeah, it is a great story and you know, hopefully we'll, over the next few few minutes, we'll um, we'll tell you all about it. Oh, it's going to be a wonderful episode. Uh, Raina, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit more about this, about this company, mm-hmm. Westphalia Fruit. Tell us where the history of this company, what, what does this brand mean? Yeah, I, I'm just so proud to be part of Westphalia. I joined uh, in August of 2021 and have learned so much about the company in these uh, fast and furious months, but Westphalia... Uh, was founded over 70 years ago on the guiding principles of environmental and social sustainability. Uh, Today, it definitely remains the same. Um, And sustainability is not a new word for us. Uh, So we've been on a sustainability journey for for decades. And it all started on the Westphalia estate in the Limpopo province of South Africa, where our founder, Dr. Hans Marinsky, acquired this estate in 1929. Um, Dr. Marinsky, he was a, um, he was a visionary. Uh, He was certainly um, a very, uh, just very gifted prospector and an acclaimed geologist. Uh, He was a dedicated humanitarian, which is also a huge part of what we still do today. It's in our fiber, it's in our heritage. Um, But when he acquired this estate, it was in disrepair. Uh, So under his stewardship, uh, he really did a lot of regenerative farming almost and eradicated the the um, the invasive species, reclaimed the soil, revitalized the estate uh, to um, indigenous biodiversity. Wow. And it began to thrive. Um, and then from that, the local economy, the community um, really thrived. And that's where the avocado orchards were planted, uh, really with uh, water conservation infrastructure and a lot of the elements of sustainability that we still um, uh, go across the globe with. Right. Today. 
So it's a whole farm approach. And we're just, again, the environmental commitment goes all the way back to our roots, literally. Um, so I know that uh, that Jonathan plays just the, you know, a, a big role in that today in his exec position for um, leading this environmental charge. And uh, I, I really want to hand it over to him so he can talk about uh, kind of where sustainability has uh, gone from 70 years ago to what it is today and what we're looking for, looking toward, towards the future to accomplish. Yeah, it's amazing. And that's exactly why uh, I know that you guys have a lot of exciting things on coming up and already actually introduced into the consumer marketplace. And Jonathan, I definitely want to get you on the mic here soon. And we're going to talk about that. But Rennie, you mentioned uh, something that has become quite the buzzword here on the podcast in agriculture and, and uh, you know, just the way that we're promoting food to consumers um, from a supply chain stakehold. And that is regenerative. And so it sounds like the the concept of regenerative farming and regenerative agriculture practices is really the foundation of upon which Westphalia fruit has been built. Yeah, it, it's I like to say we were sustainable before sustainability was cool. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's 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 worthy of the of an additional call out here because it is um, you know, that is one of the top things that you know, people from our, our industry, and this is not just fresh produce. This is all of food and Bev. Like you're, yeah. if you are not familiar as a listener of the show, if you're not familiar with the concept of regenerative farming practices, you will be, it is, it is, uh, definitely catching all of the, and it's all about soil health and, um, you know, how are we going to make sure that the earth is in a, is in its position to continue to yield, uh, great tasting, healthy food for us all. And, uh, you know, very nutrient dense food and also, um, you know, a soil health level that is always top of mind as well. So, uh, with that, you know, Jonathan, I think it's a perfect opportunity to bring you on and talk specifically about Westphalia's sustainability story and how, from an industry point of view, you guys are making some big waves and, uh, you know, getting a spotlight that is so deserving right now. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about the current state. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Laurie. Um, yeah, as, as Rain has said, sustainability, it's a new word, but it's been it's been in the DNA of this business for forever. And you know, our, our purpose is to do good. So when we have those three words, it's it's actually relatively straightforward to do good in everything that we do. And it I think because we have the legacy and the history of Dr. Um, Dr. Morensky, um, when I joined the business in 2020, um, at the heart of the COVID lockdown, we really started to look internally and say, well, where are we today and where do we want to be in the future? Um, and I think we can learn a lot from our history and, and what we have done. But what I did with the strategy was we started to focus on kind of a farm to fork approach. So we need to make sure that we are end to end. And as a business, we're fortunate that we we have that vertical integration, actually even, even further back because we've got um, one of the world's leading research team as well in avocados. Mm -hmm. um, but that farm to forks is really important that we pick up towards the consumer because we can do a lot of the right things for us as a business. But if it doesn't resonate with our consumers or the general population, we're doing the wrong things. Um, so I think sustainability is is a buzzword and it's very, very used, but it's important to, to look at what really, what does it mean and really where can we focus? So I, I took the approach of the business to look at water and we've got a long history of managing water in our orchards around the world, but water is a finite resource. Um, and we as consumers need water equally does um, plants and, and animals. So we have to use it sparingly. So water is a key focus for us, definitely. Um, and then also waste. You know, we we go to great lengths to produce something. And if we don't sell it and we just waste it, it's pointless. It's expensive. Um, mm -hmm. And it push, pushes the value of other foods that we do sell up. So, you know, how do we utilize our waste? How can we create um, value from waste as a, as, a, as a business, but also value for the community as well? So um, on water, we, you know, on water, we're using um, less to produce more. So we measure our water efficiency um, and we report that in our sustainability story um, on our website, but also through communications. Um, waste, we start to look at how we can use our waste 
that isn't suitable for the consumer, but is still good value and good product. So we we generate guacamole um, in in parts of the world, um, and we also produce avocado oil. Um, and we're pushing even further on to say, well, what can we do with the stones and the skin? And part of that is to create um, some health products with, in partnership to use the avocado stones instead of microplastics as an exfoliant in, in healthcare products. So really pushing the boundaries of what can we use the avocado for? Right. And Jonathan, we have to pause right there because that that right there is what really caught my eye when I was reading the sustainability update that Westphalia recently announced to your supply chain stakeholders. Um, and I am amazed as I think about this is this is really this is really profound for all of our listeners. So the the avocado stone or this that big pit, the seed in the middle of the avocado, um, that is being now repurposed and reused. And Jonathan, please interject if I'm misrepresenting this. But when I read it, this is how I interpreted it. And you are taking that you know, cause that really is a byproduct, you know, that is not a, that's not a co-product whatsoever. And you're, but you're taking a byproduct and you're turning it into a co-product. You are turning it into something that can be used. Um, and you're, you're targeting the beauty industry, specifically the cosmetics industry, and you are replacing microplastics that are found in cosmetics that frankly, consumers are kind of looking for, you know, as a, as a 41 year old woman, I'm always buying this stuff. And I can tell you, like, you're always looking for, the cleaner ingredient labels, the, the, you know, the, the closest to natural products that you can get. Um, and that is that this right here is why I was like, Oh my goodness, I have to tell this story on the podcast, but so you're taking them, you're taking the, the avocado pits, you're grinding them up. You're doing the, I don't, I don't really understand the process. You're going to have to explain this a little bit better for me, but you're basically replacing microplastics in cosmetics. That's a home run. Oh, completely. Yeah, yeah, it's it's absolutely fantastic, and it's a great piece of innovation that pushes the boundaries of of the mind. You know, we it's pure waste. Why would you use an avocado pit uh, for anything other than just throwing it away? Um, and we said no. That's it's a cost to throw it away. We were putting the waste into biodigesters and creating energy, um, but we just came across a partnership with somebody who, again, thought differently like we do, with a really innovative mind, and said, hey. We can use that. So we worked together to create these um, these products. And yeah, they had a great product, but they wanted to, exactly as you said, have a clean deck, you know, have a, a product without microplastics, so not being the problem. And we just had the solution and we worked together to yeah, grind, grind the um the pits down to small, small amounts and yeah, use as the exfoliator. And I must say, as a 50-something year old man, I've used them. They're great. They are great. I know. I agree. So this is uh, this is really exciting. And I I, I want to make sure that I don't um, you know, that I don't overlook all the other amazing things that you have in this in this report. But that is I mean, that is in line with so much, you know, whether we're talking about, you know, the circular economy. You know, we had a we had an episode on that in our archives. Uh, when you're when you want to take something that's a byproduct, turn it into a co-product. That's all being embodied here with with what Westphalia Fruit is, you know, doing and and what they have been doing. Um, another thing I want to emphasize to folks: it it's okay if you don't know the name Westphalia. You're you're going to do you're going it's going to have a rising consumer awareness of this brand. Um, but they're they are this is one of the largest avocado growers um, and distributors in the world. So Jonathan, I would love for you to talk towards even your footprint too, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So the other the other aspects um, that Westphalia take is a very honest approach and a very transparent approach. Um, and we started to calculate our carbon footprint in 2020 when I joined the business um, because Whilst we may be a small player in in the global scheme of things, we're actually a big player in the fruit industry and a big and a huge player leading avocado business. Mm -hmm. So we have to take the lead, and we took that view to take the footprint. Where are we today? So what, where are we? And then start to look at what can we do about it. Um, we can't hide behind the fact of where avocados are grown, where avocados are sold. The distances are huge. Um, the transport routes are challenging it from an environmental perspective and also from a water use avocados use water 
um, just like many other fruits and uh, vegetables on the planet. But we need to be driving those down and being the most efficient user of resources. And the carbon footprint um, we set out, we did 15 carbon footprints last year in partnership with um, with a, uh, a United Nations um, member. Um, we're also signatories to the United Nations Global Compact, and we've signed up to Science Based Target Initiative. So we're very much out there and putting ourselves out there. Um, but what we did find was five of those business units were carbon neutral, which was wow. a real surprise to all of us. Um, and when you know, okay, we're we're talking scope one, scope two, which is our um, the energy we buy and the energy that is produced that we buy. So a very you know a small but a significant part of it. And we're now pushing on beyond that to go to scope three, which is everything else. It's the supply chain, it's the packaging, it's the fertilizer, it's the um, agrochemicals, it's the energy to supply, it's, um, to spray the agrochemicals and, and produce them. So we're going right the way to the end and saying, this is it, this is what's and all, you know, where are we today and what can we do about it? And taking a strategic view to say, let's focus on the big areas. And we know transport, the supply chain is, is huge. Um, a lot of our products, yes, they, they truck across the border from Mexico to the US, but we're moving product from Chile to Europe, South Africa to Europe, um, you know, thousands of kilometers. And um, again, just looking at the partnerships that we're in, because we're not the only ones. The shipping lines have also got to start to look at how they can solve the problems of reducing their footprint. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're really pushing it out there. And the great thing about Westphalia is... We've got a huge support from our, um, well, I get a lot of support from the exec um, and also from the business because to do good is in our DNA. Yeah. Well, you can tell it's uh, coming alive for sure as the two of you talk about the brand. Um, so, Raina, this is this is just, it's just an amazing story. And learning more about the, the business history, Dr. Hans Marinsky, the, the founder of Westphalia Fruit, uh, you know, it, it seems like this is just this is the foundation of this business coming to life, you know, and, and as as you help the U.S. market understand more strongly what the Westphalia brand is all about, how what the environmental ethos of this company is. Uh, you know, what what's that really look like for you? How are you going to continue to develop that that understanding of the sustainability and really what Westphalia is doing under the sustainability umbrella? Yeah, it's a great question. And probably one of the things I was most excited about when joining uh, Westphalia, um, it, it truly is part of our ongoing commitment mm -hmm. from a global perspective and bringing that to the United States um, in the way that we truly are avocado experts and avocado thought leaders uh, we're devoted to the environment and the sustainability, uh, and that's real. And prioritizing this and bringing it to the United States marketplace, I think consumers are really ready for it. And they want to trust that the definition and the fact that sustainability is in our heritage and it's going to be real is a, a focus of the company, but they're going to feel good buying our fruit because yeah. avocados is a powerhouse. And you mm -hmm. said it earlier, cheers to avocados. It's such a nutrient dense fruit, but then understanding where and how it was cultivated in a responsible manner is, is just amazing. Uh, yeah. I mean, and it's, it's so the opposite of, what the the ethos at Westphalia is the opposite of some of these other like you know it's like corporate greenwashing almost what you read about it's like a lot of talk not a lot of action and I feel like it's been very much the opposite like a ton of action and maybe a little bit too much humble like maybe talk about it a little more because y'all are big <laughs> leaders here you know but um <laughs> This is, uh, it, it's really amazing. Uh, you know, Jonathan, as you were talking about the, the carbon neutrality, um, I mean, just, wow. Wow. I mean, it's amazing. Raina, you have to be so excited to help build this story and the brand loyalty here in the U S it's, it's really fun. And, and looking out to 2049, we're going to be a hundred years old. And wow. by that mark, 
we have set those long-term goals and targets that Jonathan alluded to, to becoming lifetime carbon neutral by Mm -hmm. our 100th birthday. And it's, it's not just, again, a, 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 you know, five, 10 year down the road, we've really looked at the pipeline of sustainability and created uh, achievable targets that are just, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. And those benchmarks are so critical. Um, Thank you, Raina. And, you know, so Jonathan, bringing it back to you, I mean, this is group sustainability executive. I mean, this is the hat you wear, you know, you are, you, you've got to be the, you're the man in the room that's bringing this all to life, uh, really for the entire global footprint that Westphalia has. So what's the future look like? I mean, Raina, Raina just alluded to it with this, with this centennial benchmark that you all have set, but what are some of the other things that you can share that you're working towards? I think it's important. I mean, you, you mentioned greenwashing and I'm, oh, I've am i got a long history of uh, working in retail and some of the stories that you hear, and it is just greenwashing. So I'm absolutely 100% behind this with everybody else mm-hmm. in the business. And it it is great to have those long-term goals. 2049 is a momentous time in our and in our history, uh, and to return it to the day it started is is extremely. Uh, we'll all be extremely proud. Um, it's a long way to go, but we'll we will get there. But we also need to do things that have a greater immediate impact. So um, we're reducing a lot of plastic in our packaging. So I was in um, France yesterday, um, and okay, driven by legislation and law. But we now only supply 100% of our products, uh, pre-packed products or punnets in cardboard. So we've got rid of plastic completely. Wow. Um, and yeah, we're now taking, well, what, if we've done it in France because we the law said we had to, um, although we did do it a year earlier than, uh, than expected, can we use that in other places where plastic is also a challenge? And it's the, I'm, I'm not saying plastic is bad in total it actually has some very good benefits in the fresh produce world but it's difficult to reuse recycle or repurpose so we've got to take a responsibility on plastic um, and also on chem- uh, agrochemicals um, you know we don't we do sell organic but we don't just sell organic um, and i think it's important for us to start to reduce the amount of synthetic pesticides that are being used yeah. um, really to benefit the soil as much as uh, yeah. benefit the, the consumer and the product and replace with biological, more natural chemicals. And we, we're doing a lot of work in our farms in Chile to use insects as biological controls to control other insects. Yeah. And it is a phenomenal story when you see um, you know, the, the, the ecosystem just working in harmony those plants, those trees, the soil is just alive. And it's, yeah, for me, that's fantastic. So yeah. we will reduce really a lot of our inputs into the farm. So definitely reducing our water use or using it more sparingly, reducing our pesticides um, and replacing with biological controls, um, reducing plastic. And then really the first t- the first target we have is to reduce waste because mm-hmm. it's, a real, it's a real issue. Um, we can repurpose or reuse some of it, but the rest of it, zero to landfill. And we've given ourselves the next three years to get to that point because it's an immediate problem. We just, we don't have enough planet to keep tipping things into. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. And I and I do just want to candidly share, I had the opportunity, uh, we do have some episodes in the archives on, um, the biopesticides and it is, you know, crop protection. It's like anyone who's done a backyard garden, you know, you have to do the crop protection. All right. There's many different things that fall under that umbrella, fertilizer, um, pesticide, fungicide, herbicide, et cetera. And, um, the biologicals, I, this is total layman's, like I majored in liberal arts, studied foreign language, not science. And so you're going to hear that come out loud and clear as I describe this. But, um, I, when I saw it, I, it reminded me and the people at Corteva, there's a global office for Corteva here, like literally 20 miles from my driveway. And they, 
um, took me through and showed me the biologicals, um, and how they were made. And I was like, oh, it just reminds me of kombucha. Like that's what it reminded me of Jonathan. And I, we've had scientists on the show that explain it better than that, but that hopefully in a layman's terms kind of helps our listeners understand what we mean when we say biological pesticides versus chemical pesticides, you know, we are, we are using naturally occurring, um, elements from earth and, and putting them together. And they, in a similar way where tea can become this, you know, pre probiotic bubbly drink through the process of making kombucha, you can do the same thing with pesticides. And that's, uh, my layman's definition of the biological pesticides. So, um, Jonathan, if there's anything you want to add on that, but I, uh, I always have to clarify for folks in ways where, um, I think it might help them connect the dots with what we're talking about, but, uh, it, it's a fascinating sector of our industry and it is coming on hot. So I love to see that you all are, are early adopters, um, of all of this emerging earth friendly technology, um, so that we can, uh, so that we can just make the world a better place. Yeah. And you use the word T and you're absolutely right. You know, I've been to some farms in um in Kenya and in South Africa and they talk about the tea that they use on the on the trees and in the in the soil and yeah like everything a healthy plant or a healthy tree resists um pests and diseases just like we do so our job is to raise the healthiest plants um on earth to resist everything that's thrown at them and the challenges and you know we can do that using our research team and you know yeah phenomenal Mm -hmm. what we can do and what we what we already have done so we we have a lot more to go yet to do good right do good that's right okay well goodness this has been an incredible incredible discussion thank you so much to both of you for sharing you know just these lovely thoughts, helping folks understand the the heritage of this brand. I mean, such an impressive legacy here that you are building, um, and something that's rooted in 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 such in such good, such sound sustainability practices. That's part of your foundation. Um, and with that, Raina, you get the mic for any closing remarks you have, and then Jonathan will welcome you to sign us off from the show. But I want to encourage everyone, Raina, before before you sign off with our listeners, I'd love to make sure that everyone knows wasfaliafruit.com is how you can learn more about this company, and it's W-E-S-T-F-A-L-I-A fruit.com. Uh, and we'll obviously link that in the show notes too. But Raina, please, any any closing thoughts? Yeah, thank you, Lori. I just, we've really enjoyed being on the podcast today and this conversation with you and a topic that's near and dear to our hearts. And we're just really excited about it, um, bringing the brand to the U.S. and what the brand embodies. Uh, we're so excited to engage with our customers and consumers about this. So thanks for um, helping us wave the banner and, and start to get that message out there. And we're we're looking to bring again all the global goodness that we've done uh, to the to the U.S. Like Jonathan said, plastic reductions throughout the value chain, um, beauty products with yeah. avocado seeds. <laughs> um, can't wait till we get that there. We'll have to send you some. And, Thank you. Um, and you know, just again, quality products produced in in a very sustainable fashion. Um, with that comes Avo Innovation, and we're going to do it uh, all through our purpose uh, to do good in all facets of the business. So it's just it's it's an amazing position to be in. I'm very blessed and privileged to lead the, the U.S. initiative, and I just thank you so much again for letting us uh, have this conversation today. Raina, thank you. Best days ahead, my friend. You are yes. you are right where you belong, leading a team. <laughs> you are you. This is going to be a lot of fun to watch, and we'll have to certainly have you know welcome you back on the show at any time to talk about uh, the inevitable success that Westphalia Fruit will have here in the U.S. So, uh, mm-hmm. Jonathan, thank you so much for for sharing all of your knowledge. It is quite impressive. Uh, the sustainability side of this business is it's such a shining light within the brand and what a privilege it is for us here at the produce moms to welcome you as the group sustainability exec to help to help share that story so we're going to have you close out close out the show today but any closing remarks you have and the final goodbye to our listeners 
Yeah, thanks, Laurie, and thanks, Raina. It's you know it's great to have you on board as well. So welcome to the family. Um, it's my absolute privilege to lead this part of the uh, the story with Westphalia. You know, we we we're on a journey. Um, we're definitely on the up with the journey. We've got we've got the momentum, and we're doing it. Um, because it's the right thing to do when we're taking the lead. But I, you know, I also, you know, I'm really looking forward to your consumers in the US really getting stuck into the Westphalia brand and seeing the value and the benefit that it can bring into the avocado world. And, you know, I think avocados are such a, a wonderful product, um, nutrient dense, um, readily available all year round. And I, yeah, for me, the sustainability story is dead easy. All we have to do, all of us, just do good. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to Lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a produce mom in you because there's a produce mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.